Hello, my friends. Welcome back to a very special ultra mega premium 15 minute free thinking episode with me, your host, Carpo. And I want to say hello to all of my subscribers, as well as welcome to all of the newcomers who may approach my video willing to completely tear me down and tell me how wrong I am for believing that anything to deal with cryptocurrency or NFTs might be a bad thing. Perhaps this may be different at the moment because, as we know, the volatility of the market of NFTs and Bitcoin and Ethereum and everything else have always fluctuated with the day and the literal hour that it is. Today being Friday the 13th, 2022 in April, or May, sorry, oh my god, I'm a month behind. Yes, May 13th, 2022. Today, Bitcoin is at its lowest since 19, or since 2020. It's been about two years. And at the same time, many of the other cryptocurrencies have already crashed long ago or had serious issues. Bitcoin has always been promised to be this solution to the problem of fiat currency. In order to talk about this thing, this whole subject, first I have to give the slight preamble, which you don't want to hear because you already all know. Anybody who came to this video is usually either one of th two things. One, because they're curious about crypto, which is probably only a few people, but uh, most people uh, who come to a video about NFTs are NFT defenders. There's a huge fan base. I mean, we're talking fanboys to the extreme for these things. Not everyone. But it has become so pervasive within the wealthy community and celebrities that basically it's impossible to say anything bad about these, you know, potential disasters waiting to happen for people. And the way I see crypto is uh, gambling. That's basically what it is. It's a way for people to hope and dream that they can make something off of an investment. And I think that a majority of the crypto investors know this, but many won't admit it. They won't admit that at least 90% of the users and buyers of crypto buy it in hopes of it increasing in value, not in hopes of using it because they want to be able to be anonymous. That's just an added bonus. But even that has changed. People have found ways to steal crypto, freeze crypto wallets, it's not quite as safe as maybe people want to think it is. So then people become skeptical. The minute that happens, then the market plummets. So I think Bitcoin's lost half its value recently. And when I started writing notes to make this video, this podcast, if you will, I actually, uh, Bitcoin was doing not too bad. It was like a month or two ago. Uh, I tend to get behind in my notes and get behind in making these podcasts because I have a lot of ideas. But the main reason I didn't make it is because I wanted to cover this properly without sounding condescending because I know people who have invested in crypto. I know people who love NFTs and think it's the greatest thing under the sun. The board apes NFTs. If you, Let's just start with the NFT thing. I think everyone's pretty well versed in Bitcoin. It is a volatile currency. It can go up or down before you know it, you can make a lot of money or you can lose a lot of money. And the fact is a lot of a majority of people are going to lose money because the wealthiest are the ones who can manipulate the market with a mere tweet. It is a very scary proposition when you really think about the fact that people believe that their money is safer in crypto than it is in buying, say, American dollars. On a side note, I want to make it clear, I've also read a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island. And this is a thousand page book about the Federal Reserve and uh, the fiat currency system we have in the US. And I also have a book that I haven't finished yet called Capital by Thomas Piketty. And uh, that goes <clears throat> several hundred pages into depth as well. And I am fascinated 
with how the economy works and how money works and trying to understand how we can do better. Understanding that the Fed prints money that they shouldn't. Understanding that, um, just like with NFTs, that the art world is crooked and people say NFTs are going to save us from this. Well, are they really? Or are they just going to allow wealthy people to be able to pass money around and launder it without having to do any actual, you know, hiding or any actual work? It's an investment. So let's get into the NFTs. There's an entire series of these Bored Apes NFTs most people have seen by now. In fact, Jimmy Fallon had Paris Hilton on The Tonight Show a while back, and they did a whole skit about it, and they showed their Bored Apes collection NFTs as if it was just by chance. They just had these cards of the same series, right? This is a full-blown promotion. The people that these... Uh, the agencies that they work for actually are... Uh, own some of these companies which own the NFTs uh, or sponsor or create some of these. Everybody wanted to get in on the action, right? Then we have these lazy lions. Now here's the thing. All of the NFTs, a majority of them, uh, are variations of the same creature, the same picture. But further than that, they're not even altered by humans. They're not even hand-drawn. Not only are they computer John, but they're computer generated. They are randomly assigned parts, hair, all these different things. These are computer generated pictures that people are saying, this is art. And I want to own a certificate that says I own this art. And I, I'm not going to explain it in depth for anybody who doesn't know what an NFT is. But being a non-fungible token, it means that you have a receipt literally with a number that says you own this picture. Even though anybody else can copy and paste it any way they want, they can use it any way they want. There's nothing you can really do to sue them. Or, you can, you know, maybe eventually you can take them to civil court for using your, you know, crappy little pixelated, you know, icon. It's ludicrous what people are buying. And there are exceptions, like... But even Beeple, who is a digital artist, sold like a collage of all his art for $69 million in NFT format. $69 million. That's a huge amount of money. And people would say, good for him, he's an artist. Well, that's still a little more than a person would expect for that kind of art, for that amount of art even. But good for him, still. That's the exception to the rule. Just like with Bitcoin, where you hear the Robin Hood story or the story of somebody who makes money um, and is able to pull themselves out of poverty, that's wonderful. But how many people don't? So just like with anything else, NFTs have a perceived value. And a perceived value is the same with money. But Bitcoin defenders and NFT defenders will tell you it's really about trust and that it's the same thing with currency. The only reason that the dollar exists is because we believe in it. And this is true. But that's because this is important. I know that if the lights go out tomorrow and nobody can communicate online or anywhere else and I go down to the corner store and I give them 20 bucks, it'll still buy me some bread and some beans that I don't have to worry about saying, hey, can I trade some NFTs for this or that? You know, it's... It's, a, it's not a great way to hang on to currency long term, is what I'm saying. If you're buying and selling, that's fine, but you have to admit it's like a commodity. It's like a stock. And so there has to be a perceived value. It's very much like what's really happening in these circles, and this is the sad thing, is it's the same way as company with their stock buybacks. Companies will take all of their profits for the year, and then they'll buy back their own stocks. Therefore, they don't have to pay taxes because they've spent all their money on stocks and technically don't have any income. Then these stocks can be sold off for more later. But in the meantime, the inner circles are making a whole shitload of money. And this is what happens with the NFTs. People buy them and sell them for a certain price and say, look, ooh, I'm selling this NFT for $1,000. But they're selling it basically to themselves through these circles of people. And then other people see this, and then they buy some, and it becomes this craze. And I know that especially young people these days get really into this, because it's fast money. And 
I think that's wonderful for those who make it work, but it's very unfortunate for those who really don't, which, as I said, are a majority. And the promise of wealth for no real work, this FOMO, the fear of missing out, it's, it's real. I mean, the struggle is real out there, and I don't blame young people for wanting to jump on the bandwagon on this. FOMO is definitely a thing, and the promise of quick wealth has always enticed all of us. You know, I have a YouTube channel. I have never made very much anything really money-wise off of it. And I've always thought, what if one day my channel goes viral and I start making a bunch of money? Will I change the way that I behave because of that? Will I, uh, you know, change who I am if it will make me a bunch of money? And the thing is, the reason I ask that is because so many wealthy people do exactly that. They fake and they lie and they pretend like they really care about these certain things and that they support these things and they tweet about them because it gets others to buy it. If you just invested $20 million in crypto in one, you know, some sort of a coin, uh, of course, you have any clout whatsoever, the first thing you're going to do is tweet, I bought all this coin, it's great, it's going to go far. And then everyone else will buy it. Then the price goes up, the demand goes up, but eventually everybody goes, eh, and everything crashes back down. And um, so it is playing a game. It really is. And it's still really weird to me that with NFTs, the art is not owned. It's just not a physical representation. Something happened the other day, uh, a while back. It blew my mind. And it really put a perspective on how bad this is. Somebody had an original painting. I believe it was from... Oh, was it? I think it was a Banksy, actually. An original Banksy painting, right? They burned it on a live stream and made an NFT out of it. Now, let me reiterate here. Somebody burned an actual art piece that was physically made by an artist so they could sell it as an NFT and nobody could have the physical copy. What the fuck? I mean, really, what the fuck is wrong with people? And how is that considered celebrated or normal? It, and it... I believe it sold for more, of course. Um, there's... Nothing is being added to the art world with NFTs. I just want to say that. Very, very little. A lot of people want to say artists are getting paid, but I just, from what I've heard from artists, it's just not true. They're still getting much less than they should. If, even if they make good money off of the NFTs they sell, other people sell it for ten times as much. It's the others who make the money. It's a really disgusting industry. Not art itself, but the modern art and uh, capitalist art world, which capitalizes on other people's art. They're like vultures. It's horrible. It's just like in the music world. Same thing. You know, they tell you what to play. They tell you what to paint. And it's... Uh... But with the NFT things, it's just weird. It's just digital pictures. And they're all the same. So then you go to YouTube and you Google NFTs. And what do you come across? Hundreds of videos of people telling you how great they are and how you should invest and you should buy some of these and how they can make you rich and they're screaming out loud and maybe it's just one of those gambling channels where they want to always consistently roll these fake slot machines and convince you to buy, 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 you know. If... If things were that simple, I want people to ask themselves a question. You know, because I grew up with a lot of things that were pop... Baseball cards, for example, when I was a kid were, were a hot commodity. I have a bunch of old 80s baseball cards, and they were worth a, you know, a decent amount back in the 80s. Today, they're worth about maybe a tenth of what they were worth then. Why? Because the fad is over. Rarity does not matter at all, at all in this world, unless there's a demand for that rarity. Now, baseball cards can be physically held and looked at. Imagine an NFT in 10 years when people are like, bored ape, what? What is that? It, 
becomes just completely pointless when people finally realize that there's no actual value to it and that the high has worn off the people who make the money will have already made their money and it's just like the beanie babies back in the 80s and 90s it's just like pokemon cards and um you know hell collect records instead at least you get something back out of it i buy records and uh as i have a bunch behind me here and uh i i find it's a very rewarding thing to collect because i like music so you buy a record, they send you the record, plus a download for the album, for, you know, of course, you always get a free download. So you got not only the download or the album itself, support the artist, but then you get a vinyl record that you can sell down the line for even more. It's a real investment. I've never seen a vinyl record fluctuate and go down in price. I mean, they may vary over time, but generally they stick within the same realm. Because they're not volatile. Nobody is an expert on these things. Nobody really knows how all this works. And the FOMO, the fear of mis missing out, is, is, it really is real. Now, do I think this could be used by real artists? And, and is it? Yes, of course. Of course I can see it being used by real artists as a way to perhaps, you know, legitimize a digital works. Even a short movie or a skit, which I, that's some of the things that have been used for, are fine. But I'm talking about just still pictures or even just quick little, you know, gifs of just complete generic nature. Why do people buy into the hype? It's like wearing name brand clothing, and I've never understood it. And I guess it frustrates me because so many young people fall victim to this. They're the ones who are all excited and want to be like the big boys, you know, make money. And uh, so much of this time and energy could be used on better things, like creating art itself, you know? As I've mentioned the term tone chasers before. People who don't play music, they just continuously look to adjust the knobs to try to get the right sound. It's the same thing with, like, art chasing. It's like always trying to get to the newest, hottest artists, but really, at this point, it's not even about the art anymore at all. It's just about uh, what people are buying on the market. And things have definitely changed a lot. And, you know, crypto has a lot of potential. It really does. I definitely believe that. But it is abused by the wealthy, and they have the final say quite often in the value because they're the ones who can buy and sell huge amounts of it. And so when celebrities are promoting these things that they don't understand, as well as companies, and I'm talking about the NFTs for com from companies like Pepsi, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Pringles, there was KFC, Nike, they had them for the Olympic Committee, the NBA, in fact, the NBA was selling moments as NFTs. They were like certain shots or, you know, baskets. So what does that mean? That nobody else can watch the replay without breaking a law? I mean, it's just absurd. Um, digital tacos at Taco Bell sold out, like, right away. So we are living in a weird time. Um, Adidas, Campbell's Soup, even... You know, when the dot-com bubble burst back in the old days, <laughs> 20 years ago, right? Um, it was because there was a lot of speculation of the future of the Internet. And a lot of people don't remember that. They, a lot of people also don't remember the crash of 2008 and how, you know, speculating on anything, trying to make a quick buck, can screw everybody over in the long run. But never have I seen something as bold and obvious as the tax loophole that we call crypto uh, and NFTs right now, any cryptocurrency. Look, I, I sound like, as I've said, the old man screaming at clouds. I'm definitely not. I'm, I've looked into these things. I can't sit here and recite everything I've learned about NFTs or cryptocurrency. I just want to say that I believe, my opinion, firmly, that all cryptocurrency as well as the NFT market, are a new form of the pyramid scheme, which will collapse. 
I don't know how to label it, what to call it. It's, um, it's so obvious that the only way to continue it going is people investing. It's one of those things where the rug will be pulled out. And the rug pull is a famous, actually, thing that has happened to a lot of investors in crypto. Bitcoin may be too big for that now, but with how much it's lost in the last few days, it's hard for me to actually give it any credibility. Whenever people say you should have invested, um, then a month later, I'm like, well, you shouldn't have invested, right? I mean, you can't win them all. And it shouldn't be a finger pointing game. Look, if crypto ends up being successful, the crypto bros, they don't go out pointing at everybody saying, I told you it was going to work. And the people who say it doesn't work when it crashes, don't tell them and say, I told you so. Because the thing is, all we really want is a form of currency that works for us, that we can buy and trade and sell, you know, without a middleman and somebody getting some of the cash, a little bit here, a little bit there, credit card companies and taxes, all this crap. But the truth is that it's going to take a lot of work to make it a viable method of payment. When I went to the Eclipse Festival several years back, I remember I had to buy Bitcoin to get in there. And I remember back then it was like 1500 bucks a Bitcoin or something. And uh, I bought a couple because I had to uh, buy the ticket. I never left any in the wallet, but the point being, I'm, but well, I might have left some in the wallet. I don't know because I just bought a certain amount then I bought my tickets. I don't know how to get into it and I never will. So it's one of those things where it's kind of lost, but um, there is a, a kind of a fear of losing that, you know, your wallet and losing your number. So there are many aspects. There's positives and negatives. More of the positives go to the people who make it work for them. A lot of drug dealers do make you know, uh, it is a huge benefit to them as well as, uh, you know, many different people trading through different countries. But I don't want to get into that because that's the same with cash or gold or anything else. I want to leave on a positive note because if you've invested, invested in crypto and you're doing well, I think that's awesome. But I think the NFT craze is jumping up too quick and people are getting way too into it. And uh, we should be quite careful. So that's all I got to say. And uh, thanks for coming along. This podcast will be available on video form on YouTube as well as the audio version. So I'll be turning off the video version now to finish the audio version.